No pressure, no diamonds, no friction, no fire, right? So, hey, man, let's get started. Uh, we want to know a little bit more about you yeah. and your personal story, because I know yeah. you have a great story to tell, yeah. and we love it for you to share with the world. Yeah. So, just want to start with something that's personal. Yeah. Can you? So, can you go ahead and just talk a little bit about your experiences growing up yeah. and any adversities that you've been through that yeah. really shape you, your worldview? Well, you know, um, I was born in Detroit, Michigan. Um mm -hmm. So just that in itself, and for the people that, you know, um, don't know where that is, it's border city to Windsor, Ontario, Canada, in the Midwest. Real cold, real cold um, winters, uh, very short but very hot summers, and um, it's a, a city of, of blue-collar workers. So like uh, GM, Ford, Chrysler, the big three, all the, the, the major manufacturers were there, and... Um, you know, growing up, we we had Motown, so it was very music predominant. It's a great great town for for creators, and I was born in, in '83, so everything was just booming in those industries yeah. at that time. And uh, I remember, you know, just growing up, you know, listening to good Motown music, and uh, and I, I was talking uh, off camera about you know growing up in a two parent household for a very short period of time. My mom and my dad were together, and I think I was like maybe three or four, maybe when they divorced. And uh, that was the first adversity I ever faced, you know, my family breaking up. And um, what I thought was perfect, I think we think when we're younger, adults are perfect, and then we become adults and we know we're not. Mm -hmm. uh, so I was just like, wow, you know, that, that changed fast. And for me, the first adversity I faced, obviously, was my family breaking up. But when I realized um, the power of a two-parent home economically mm -hmm. because you know we had the three car garage with the two cars and the big kitchen and the den with the big pool table and the pool out back family gatherings you know friends over for barbecues and just like that everything changed mm -hmm. and so i realized like wow first of all a two parent household isn't isn't only good for what it provides for a child and and the safety and the well-being but you know why do they call it a safety net financially? Well, because it's mm -hmm. it's important to have. Uh, that's why I'm super, you know, focused on finances and and teaching, you know, financial mm -hmm. health and stability and you know earning money and you know uh, I have my 19 year old working with me side by mm -hmm. side. You know that adversity changed my co um, complete outlook on life in itself. Yeah. yeah. Man, do you feel like? Um a lot of the times, all these adversities really show, sh shape you to be like a better person, a better human yeah. being. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, again, you know, I'm a I'm a huge believer in uh, in God, man. And you know, if there, how do you, how could you read the Bible or any like the Torah, the Quran? I, you know, I don't care what you believe in, divinity, the divine spirit, Jah, Yahweh, whatever you believe, whatever makes you a better person, whatever gives you the essentials, the principles, right? Mm. Um, but I think it's 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 carrying your cross and turning your burdens into blessings, and uh, you know I'm I'm writing the book Scared of Success how to turn you know tragedy into triumph or how to turn traumas into triumphs, huh. and you and you have to huh. you in life you will inevitably be presented with adversities you will have problems, but it's the way that you respond to them um, and and what you learn from them. And if you don't become a better person through adversity, I don't know what you can come a better person from. You, mm -hmm. you know, you, you should be learning from the, uh, I say, hey, the L's, losses come right before the M's, the millions. So you need, you got to, <laughs> like you know, bro. alphabetically it's set <laughs> up true. that way. You just got to watch for the signs. Yeah. Man, no, I really like that. So yeah. that sometimes where people are going through those L's and the adversities, yeah. like it, it just feels like you're going to stay there for a long time. Yeah. And you feel like sometimes like, why is this happening to me? So what, when you were going through those times, yeah. what was that your mindset like that allowed you to really shift it or change it? to at least be allow you to move forward those those adversities you know i you know like one of the things that mentally there's only two things that can happen when you have adversities okay one of them is that it will break you down right like it'll take you into a space of like negativity and like depression mm -hmm. and i think if people say that they've never been there they're lying right mm -hmm. it's just you're just flat yeah. out lying okay yeah. Yeah. um and uh to get to get tougher through those adversities or you know, to, to, to have them shape you into uh, a character-driven person 
it's it's finding other people who have had those adversities and have had an amazing life because of it. Hmm. Because if you think about it, like if you think about like a Muhammad Ali, like we're going to start with sports, Muhammad Ali. Sure. You know, they were threatening to take away his championship. They were going to put him in jail. You know, he changed his name from Cassius Clay to Muhammad Ali. He found his faith in God. And every time he got better, it was after something really bad happened that shaped his character. And so adversity is necessary. No pressure, no diamonds, no friction, no fire, right? So it's through the friction that the fire is born. And, you know, a lot of people say the fire inside or the passion. Once you realize that adversities are actually necessary in order to, to find your success, whether that's in love, whether that's in finances, whether that's in business, in partnerships, mm, that's true. you're better off having adversity in the beginning of the partnership by having the conversation that you need to have with your partner. Hey, what time do you go to bed? What time do you expect me to be here? How uh, often do you expect me to check in? How much money do you expect me to make? How many deals do you expect? You might as well have that conversation in the beginning. Yes. <laughs> okay. Adversity is necessary. Man, yeah. I really like that. So when it comes to success, has there even been a time where you were maybe uh, doubting yourself? Like, can I do this? Or where you always had that mindset, I will make it happen no matter what? Um, I think doubt is just another one of the emotions that God gives to us so that we can gauge where we are and make a decision. Um, mm -hmm. I think doubt is almost like uh, the, the, the compass, you know, or, you know, proverbially speaking, or like the pinpoint in our lives to where we decide what direction will we go in from here. So yeah, I've, I've definitely doubted myself. But here's the thing about it. Every time I've ever doubted myself, I found the solution to the problem because you know I'm the guy that loves to solve problems. I found the solution to the problem and the doubt has made me more confident inevitably. So here's, he, here's where it starts. Yeah, lots of doubts, lots of worries, lots of fears. But having that tenacity, having that grit, having that, well, I already started here, I at least want to end up here inside of me, allowed me to push through those doubts, have successes, and every doubt that I turned into a success made me so much stronger that I'm really confident now. Like, it's, mm. I'm looking for somebody to doubt me so I can feed off of that energy and prove it wrong. There you go. You know? Let me ask you this. When it comes to that success compass, yeah. like a lot of successful people, that what I've noticed is that they have that, that instinct for um, successful businesses or yeah. successful opportunities, I might say. So sometimes like people start different businesses. They're trying to figure out what works, what doesn't work. And it's always, always part of life and a part of entrepreneurship. But you personally, and maybe other people that you know, how is it that by time, by w always like winning in different success business and ventures, how can you tell now, hey, this is a venture I want to go and just go all in to, because I know that it has potential in, of success. You know what I mean? I I'm going to tell you straight up. If it's solving a problem. Here's the thing for me. One of my mantras is the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. And so if you can learn how to solve really, really big problems, and I really want you to think about what I'm saying right here. What do doctors do? Save lives. Saving lives is a huge problem. What do lawyers do? They save you money, save your business, keep you out of jail, right? Put together contracts to actually help you bind businesses. They solve big, big problems. All right, let's lower the scale a little bit, right? When we think about a lawyer and we think about a mechanic, we think about a low level position and a high level position, but let's be honest. There's luxury cars, right? There's regular cars. Mechanics solve huge problems, and so whatever they tell you you have to pay them, you do, and if you try to go get a cheaper one, sometimes you get a worse one. So, you know, when I say with having so much success and having so much, um, I think a good word for this is experiences that have led me to greatness through adversity I look for bigger adversities and bigger problems to solve, and that's what makes me want to go into it. And if the person that I'm investing into or investing with can see that, like almost like as a visionary, and they're like, man, I'm going to solve this problem before it even happens, because it's going to happen. And this is going to be the thing that's going to give them the comfort, the love, the passion, the money, the things that people chase. That's what makes me say, I'm doing that. And it's the exact opposite that makes me say, I'm not doing that. <laughs> that's not even a big problem. That can be solved and, and it can be ripped off 20, 30 different ways. I'm staying away from it. 
Man, I really like that answer. I really like that <laughs> answer. <laughs> wow. Um, so I just want to ask you, just from a personal like curiosity, when it comes to business partnerships, yeah, yeah you're starting a lot of business. Yeah, yeah. When it comes to business partnerships, what do you think makes a good business partner for you? So, so for me personally, and this is just because this is the type of person that I am, and I've okay. also come to realize that you have to be honest about who you are and what your expectations are. Okay. Set the standard. Don't fall below it. Always work to exceed it. And so for me personally, I do real estate. They call me the original loaded agent, Carlos the Closer. I'm, I'm, I, I didn't even realize even when I was a kid I was this guy. But, <laughs> but for a, a good business partner for me is honest up front about what they can do and what they cannot do. Be honest. I will never do this. I will never be here at this time. I don't want to do these four things. What that says to me when somebody gives me that type of transparency and they're also saying I also have an incredible work ethic and I'm okay with you know, working extra hours, I'm okay with doing extra deals, driving extra places, whatever, mm -hmm. but they're also letting me know what not to expect from them. So they're giving me the opportunity in the beginning to say I don't wanna do this or I can live with you not doing those seven things because I'll really pick up the slack in those areas. Mm -hmm. And so a good business partner to me has great work ethic they're honest and transparent about what their strengths are. They're forthcoming about what their weaknesses are. And they give you the opportunity to make the decision if this is a partnership that you want to enter. And they, they ask the same of you in return. In hindsight, they don't ask anything of you that they are not willing to do themselves. Or they tell you what they're not do willing to do themselves so that you can fill that void or we can find somebody else too. Interesting, interesting. That's good to know. Anybody who wants to start a business and they, they want to learn more about that, yeah, that's definitely good, dude. Yeah. Um, now, can you tell us a little bit about a personal experience that you know you haven't really shared with anybody else? Uh, we want to really get to know you. Yeah, now, yeah, man. yeah. <laughs> hey, this is in light of scary success. You know, when I was um, about twelve or thirteen years old. Um, like I said, I grew up in a, a very adverse situation and I, I realized that money was really, really important. And so when I was like 12 or 13 years old, uh, I ran into a friend of mine who shall remain nameless and he opened up this little bag and he said, I got this and people want to buy it. Right. And I was like, well, what is it? And it was narcotics. Right. And I was like, man, like, you know, what is it? You know, what does it do? I was just a really, I was still a kid. You got to remember at 12 years old, you're actually a kid. You haven't developed your full moral compass. Mm -hmm. And that was the first time, you know, I got introduced to what the street life was all about. And uh, that was my first business. That was my first business. And I was really good at it um, at a very young age. And I learned um, tenacity and, and uh, finesse and, uh, mm -hmm how to get your talk yourself out of a sticky situation, how to talk to yourself into situations. And I found a lot of my gifts there. Uh, mm. And it was a really, it, it, I found a gift and a curse there because I didn't really fully consciously understand what I was getting myself into. But in the likeness of my last answer, I was solving a problem that I had, which was being in economic despair. And so when you put anybody in a situation where it's like, I got to go to church to get bologna and cheese and bread to eat sandwiches. And I have holes in my zapatos. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I need to do something mm. to fill the void, to fill the gap. Mm. And I didn't think about the consequence. I thought about, you know, what I needed to do to feed myself, to be able to slip some money under my mom's. She used to have this little doily on her, uh, on her dresser where mm. she had a mirror. I used to slip a little bit of money under there. I wanted to be a man. I wanted to be the man that, I didn't have in my life anymore. And I had an older brother, uh, I have an older brother, who is uh, who had that same tenacious kind of go-getter mentality. Oh. And uh, I'll tell the, you, you have to read the book to get the rest of that answer. <laughs> but yeah, man, I've never yeah. really told anybody. I, I kind of got into that street life at a really young age, like 12 years old. And, um, you know, I would, you know, am I the most proud of it? N not necessarily proud, but I wouldn't change a page in my book because mm -hmm. Every one of those things that I have gone through have made me who I am today. Oh wow! Yeah, damn. Yeah. So, um, how did that upbringing allow you to be able to get into maybe real estate, or you start thinking about yeah, yeah. real estate? That's a, that's a, that's actually a great, <laughs> that's a great follow up question yeah. because um, as I grew in that particular business, you got to remember I was still in like 
the ni- eighth and ninth grade. You know, I was in I was in I was in oh. elementary going into high school, <laughs> and uh, you know what I was learning was like entrepreneurship and team building and negotiations. You know what I mean? I was learning the importance of conversation and uh, enterprising and uh, <laughs> expanding my horizons and yeah. and diversifying my business. And <laughs> it's crazy because. I'm really good at what I do now, and I'm and I and I love what I do, and um, all of my negotiation skills. I say that I tell like I say this, and people don't really get what I mean, but I'm like I got all my skills in the trap. Like I got all of my like you seen how I just switched it to Zapatos, and I could just, and my name's Carlos, but I talk really proper, but I'm also black. You know what I mean? Like so, I fit into so many different characteristics, and I fit so many people's ideals, or I or I. You know, I can go to hip hop, I can go to black intelligence, I can go to jazz, I can go to, you know, I, I was athletic, I have a hundred pound weight loss story. I'm, I'm very well versed. And, I, and, and that has segued me into, and I'll do real estate for the rest of my life. Like I love what I do. Wow. Um, so what is it about real estate that you like? What is it? Okay, so I told you the bigger the problem, the bigger the paycheck. And I do, the loaded agent, Uh, I'm the original loaded agent, but the loaded agent team, I'm able to teach them how to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And because I grew up, look, man, we didn't like, we had government assistance. Mm -hmm. We were on welfare, you know, even though I was involved in some money making schemes, you know, at an earlier age, I was, I moved in that direction because I had to fill the void. And, um, you know, I I love helping people. It's so weird because that story that I just told you is like adverse. But on the other side of that, you know, maybe it's my way to do right by people and love them, no matter what their situation is. I deal with foreclosures. I deal with divorce. I deal with probate. I deal with inherited property, tax liens. You know, I still represent the middle of the wow. road, you know, buyer client and seller client, but yeah. I attack the problems. And so what I know about human beings, it's human nature to run away from problems. It's human nature to not want to deal with problems, right? Right. So I get to play like, almost like this superhero role where I come in, I got the cape on, I know what to do, I got, you know, and I leave it up to the person whether they want themselves to be served or not. And I love, you know, I'm renovating a house right now and getting it ready for the market. I love creating. And so real estate allows me to create on, you can tell by the way I lit up when I answered the question, like real estate allows me to practice so many different of my gifts and constantly be in a servant mentality because very, very opposite of who I was is who I now am. And so I just want to give and give and give and give and give and real estate allows me to do that. Hmm, Interesting. Do you feel like by doing what you love, that gives you a lot of energy? It does. Because uh, there's a lot of bullshit. (laughs) Like, I'm just being honest. Like, (laughs) you know, this morning, you know, I opened up some, um, some materials that we bought, some flooring, you know, when I called the warehouse, it was all supposed to be this color. We got into the seventh box after the seventieth box after the uh, second room was already done, and half the colors are different. Mm. Um, I'm like, these are different. Co- like, so now I got to call the manufacturer. He's like, box, you know, use what you can, bring back what you don't have. I've already been there twice. I already exchanged. So there's a lot of stuff. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Dealing with the clients, what they need, the expectations. Dealing with the law firms. Dealing with the title companies. There's a lot of adversities, which I seems to be the theme, but <laughs> you know, it's when you love it, you don't, it doesn't even bother you. I learned something new through each adversity, like I keep telling you. And so I get maybe real estate fulfills like my sick side where I'm like, oh, more problems. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I'm good at solving them. And so like, That's no cool. matter how hard it is, I just want to solve the next issue. Interesting. Interesting. So what would you say is your personal definition of success to you? Um, that's a great question. Um, my personal definition of success is what gives you fulfillment in your life. Mm. So for some people, that's going to be money and strictly money. Um, for me personally, um, it's having a great relationship with my wife. Like we talk about honesty, openness, transparency. Um, I'm a baby, dude. Like I'm a big baby. So, but I go out here and I, I just kill everything in the world. Like I just, yeah. you know, slaying the dragons and just bringing them back to the queen. And 
Uh, having a good relationship with my kids. I got a two-year-old, a four-year-old, uh, praise and saint. And then my oldest, Antoine, you know, I came here with him. He does all my, man, he's learning the business from behind the scenes. Mm. Um, it's about what I can give to them as well and what can I, what I can leave behind. Um, physical fitness, man, paying attention to my body. Um, you know, I lost over 100 pounds over 10 years ago, and I've kept it off for over 10 years. I was talking to Hazel's off camera, and I said, you know, he said, you know, every day my inner bitch tells me don't do that, right? Like, don't mm -hmm. get up. Don't don't watch what you eat. You know, you ain't got to go to the gym. Don't worry about it, yada, yada, yada. And uh, I say that it very, just as fast as you can plant seeds and grow a garden is just as fast as the weeds can come in and kill your plant, your roses. And so... Um, success for, for me is 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 the, the 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 trifecta with the with the bonus mind body spirit right mm. and then add a little bit of wealth in there and that's everything you that know what I mean perfect mix that's the perfect mix <laughs> that's the perfect amount of sugar for my Kool Aid you know what I mean <laughs> there you go <laughs> so uh, you talked a little bit about different things that you value um, what means success to you yeah. so tell us a little bit about your routines. Because I know you lost a lot of weight. Yeah, yeah. You've been through a lot of different things. Yeah. Tell me about your current routine right now. So my current routine right now is my, my alarm goes off at 3.45 a.m. Okay. Um, I fight with that. I box that alarm every morning. Snooze, 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 snooze. <laughs> uh, but I usually get up about, you know, between 3.45 and, and 4 a.m. Okay. Um, you know, I, I say a, a prayer. I get into manifestation. I get right with my creator. Give my asks, ask what's, you know, whatever is to be um, handled by me comes into my path. Mm -hmm. And then I have the grace and the patience and the mental fortitude to deal with that. I immediately get into physical exercise. That's my time with myself and God. You know, mm -hmm. I write down a lot of my thoughts when I'm in the gym in between sets. You know, I kind of give myself notes and, and I'm a big fan of incremental goal setting and incremental mm -hmm. goal getting. I think mm -hmm. what people don't realize is that life is... There's no big things in life. There's only little things. Think about this. A car is made up of nuts, bolts, sheet metal, fiberglass, titanium, glass, but these are all very small bits, and they come together to become one thing. And so I look at my routine as a bunch of small little things that I have to check off on a regular basis in order to get that big thing. Mm -hmm. And that's like that trifecta plus that bonus. So, you know, I wake up 3.45, 4, I'm out in the gym. By about 7.30, 8.30 a.m., I'm back home. I fast. I only have liquids in the morning, so I, um, mm -hmm. I'm very spiritual in that way. I want my body to know how much I care about it. And so whatever doesn't need to be in it, I want it to be expelled. And then I want to replenish it with what it specifically needs so that it feeds my mind in a certain way that I give that energy to people. Mm -hmm. And then I start my day. I start to go through my tasks. I have about 10 staff members right now. Everything from appointment setters to a personal assistant. My wife has a personal assistant. Me and my wife run the business together. And kind of as things come in, I try to, you know, you see my phone go off a million times. I just try to put a system in place so that, you know, system, save yourself time, energy, money. System, save yourself time, energy, money. Mm -hmm. And so my time is so valuable that I would rather spend it very specifically and intentionally so that the return that I get on my investment that I can never get back, which is my time, is very well spent. So it's mm -hmm. exercise, it's wake up, thank God, gratitude, meditation, exercise, execute my daily activities, and then get home in time to have enough energy, you know, and I gotta do better at this, mm -hmm. and I transparently, I have to do better at this, to have more energy for my kids and to have more energy and a better attitude for my wife. So, you know, because life beats you up. You know, you're dealing with a lot of situations where you're you're solving a lot of problems and your energy, you, you know, you, I start with 120% on, yeah. on my phone and I get home with <laughs> yeah. the red bar. Yeah. I want to get yeah. home with the green bar so that I have enough for my family as well. Oh, wow, yeah. that's good. Um, so tell me about some exciting projects that you're working on right now. Man, I'm working on, I got two, two big deals that I'm working on right now. Obviously, the Scared of Success, um, How to Turn Traumas into Triumph is, is huge. Um, it's an autobiography, but it's more of a, of a self-help manual. I found myself when writing the book having a lot of like emotional breakdowns, emotional breakthroughs, um, thinking about you know some of the regrets I had and what I can't do to change them, but I have to live with them. Um, thinking about some of the things that I want to do better, being excited about just telling my, my story, my truth in its entirety. Um, there's a, there's a part of me, there's a part of all of us that's afraid to tell the things that we've been through for fear of judgment. 
and I'm mm-hmm. so proud of myself from being for being over that. I don't care. You know, I had a I had a I guess I'm answering this question again <laughs> twice, mm-hmm. but you know, one thing that nobody knows, some people know, but they don't really know the true extent of it is, I, you know, at about 20, my mid 20s, I had a home invasion. I had guys that come, come in for the life I was living and uh, they wanted to rob me and kill me. And uh, I talked myself out of it, but 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 God saved me because when the when there was a guy in my room, he had a gun in my face and he, he pointed the gun in my face. And I, when you look down, the, don't be stupid and look down the barrel of a gun. I have. And when I look down the barrel, you know, you can see the cartridge in the bottom of the gun and then you can see the actual ammunition. So when it's actually cocked and there's a and there's a bullet in the chamber, you can see it. OK. And so I look down the chamber of that gun. My eyes are all bloody. I was all beat. I was all bruised. I'm like, you know, and um, I remember reliving that experience, writing about it. Um, because two, two or three reasons. One, they were incredibly stupid for what they were actually trying to achieve. Two, it was the main pivot, pivotal point in my life where I really like talked to God. And he was like, bro, God talks to me like I talk to my to myself and my, my homies. He was like, bro, like I've been trying to hook you up. This is the last time I'm hooking you up. If you don't do what you're supposed to do now, you're out of here. And I was like, if God is like a father and I'm a father, and when I tell my kids that they better not stop doing something, and I'm serious about it, I'm serious about it. So I realized that was my opportunity to actually change my entire life, and I did. And it was hard. Mm-hmm. Believe it or not, it was it, it was harder than it should have been. But anyway, I digress. Yeah. Wow. So that was a big major. Uh, that was that was that, that was that that was a a, a life changing event, and that and working on that that book that that big project gave me so many different breakthroughs. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I'm building a huge real estate team right now, man. Mm -hmm. We're doing, I'm making a bunch of, one of my agents just messaged me. She's like, man, I'm doing the business credit thing right now. Killing it. I just did the $10,000 program and I'm about to get an 800 credit score. And I'm like, that's what, you know, everything I've been through, I can give everybody everything now and really help people change their lives. And that's, that's, that's everything for me, man. Mm-hmm. You want to know what it is? Nobody helped me like that. Like nobody just came and was like, like I had to dig in the dirt for it all. Mm. And then when I finally came out of diamond, everybody's like, oh, I love you. What can I do to help you? <laughs> that's, what, that's how it goes. <laughs> that's how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you stay focused dude, and motivated into everything you do? Um, I just, I try to always, re- I always try to reflect on my spirituality and, and the people oh. that are, that, um, I love that depend on me. And that's, that's, that's deeper than like a surface level thing. Like this, mm-hmm. you know, I, you know, I, I, when I woke up this morning, I had no idea that I'd be here with you guys. This wasn't the thing that was on my schedule, even <laughs> though I wanted it to be. Yeah. But I, I, I was thinking about my mom and how much she had mm-hmm. been through. And I wasn't the most gracious son in the world. Um, and so I just, I was thinking to myself, like, you know, what can I do, um, to honor her today? Right. And, uh, mm-hmm. I think, you know, I set that standard for myself and I tried just not to fall below that standard, mm-hmm. um, is, is kind of the best way that I can put that. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Um, how, how important it is to have the right, like spouse, <laughs> I want to really hear about this. Bro. Honestly, that's that's everything. That 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 because here's the thing about it. You got to have the right spouse or no spouse. Mm. And when I say that, wow. this is what I mean. Some people think like the best spouse in the world is the spouse that loves everything that you love. Like I love the gym, they love the gym. I love chocolate, they love chocolate. I love traveling to this place, they love traveling to that place. And that's not actually it. The best spouse is a spouse that understands you for who you are collectively adds value to the things that you love, keeps you in line in a way that's honestly, honest, truthful, and transparent. Hey, maybe you shouldn't do it this way. Hey, think about this, slow down, mm-hmm. things happen for a reason, but always pushes you to be your best self. And if you don't have that, you're better off just having yourself and looking in the mirror and saying that to yourself, because the opposite of that is somebody that's anchoring you. This is the way I say that a spouse is. It's either an anchor or a propeller. Either they're stopping you from getting your to your destination or they're making sure that you get there in fashion. Yeah. Wow. Wow. No, that's good. 
I think we all need to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> that's like, and by the way, that's business. Yeah. You know, that's uh, friendships. Yeah. yeah. You got to really get serious about who is your, your friends. You know, you're picking friends and acquaintances and business partners is like picking a spouse. Pick the wrong one. They just throw the anchor off the back of your ship. And you might have been on your way to the promised land. Okay. Wow. So, Man, no, that's good. So what are some strategies that you use for your business right now? Uh, honestly, I'm like one of those consistency people. Like, you know, um, my biggest strategy is, uh, and I teach this, by the way, um, you know, loadedagent.com that's where i kind of tell people to, to come and to to get these strategies but uh so look, look for the problems look for the gaps look for what's missing and figure out what you can do to to fill that void mm. uh consistency is big i love um uh taking advantage of technology um i'm using a lot of ai um mm. because ai i mean i mean i'm 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 able to um reach many more people, have many more conversations, teach it to my team. So now we can multiply what we do. Um, I'm using a lot of uh, manpower. So before I used to think that, you know, mm. I had to do everything. Mm. That's stupid. Um, mm. Cause it, it's draining. Um, I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm more involved in leveraging people. So when I say that, one of my favorite mm -hmm. quotes, I think it was John D. Rockefeller would say, who said, I would rather have 1% of 100 people's effort than having 100% of my own. So I'd rather mm -hmm. make $1,000 from, a, from, I would rather make $100 from 1,000 people, right, than sit there and try to create that currency all myself. Because I now I'm using less of my own individual energy, but I'm still getting the same amount. And if I can teach those people to be better, I can also make more. Mm -hmm which means I can preserve my energy. I can, you know, keep my, you got to learn to control your temperament. And a lot of that has to do with your stress tolerance. And I tolerate stress well by having people to help me tolerate the stress. Team, teamwork makes a dream work. It's everything. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. So how has, um, how has being known as the original loaded agent yeah. influenced your personal brand and business? Personal brand is everything. Yeah. Personal brand is everything. So the original Loaded Agent and Carlos the Closer, they're married. It's a great relationship. <laughs> and uh, it, it's changed the dynamic of, I think it's changed the dynamic of my brand in a positive way and in and, and, and ways that have changed my life and will change my life forever. Had the opportunity to, to be on stage just after Ed Milet, just oh. this past month in Orlando, Florida for the EXP shareholders event, which was mm -hmm. huge. Won the Icon Award two years in a row. Uh, I've done over 150 transactions in less than 18 months. Year over year, we've been able to do six and seven figures. And your personal brand, that's the reason why I just tell my who I am authentically and transparently now. And just let the people judge me who are going to judge me and let the people love me who are going to love me. Mm -hmm. And so that whole original Loaded Agent thing, like I did a podcast, um, Connect Podcast with Curtis Dixon about... 40 days ago and uh they gave me a good introduction you know we were talking about trademarks and branding and what you need to do in order to really you know dramatically increase your success and uh that personal brand in itself has got my phone never stopping uh <laughs> it, you know deals come to me now um and uh i think what it does is I'm so responsible for that thing that I'm super careful with it, but I, I still have that risk nature inside my inside my DNA, and so I'm willing to I'm willing to do the things that you need to do in order to make the brand better. So it's changed my life for the better, ultimately. Man, wow, that's really cool. So when it comes to like real estate, what are some challenges that you have to overcome? Um, honestly, in real estate, the challenges that you have to overcome a lot of the time have to do with yourself. Mm -hmm. So you know, creating your routine, you know. A perfect example of a million dollar routine for a realtor is this. Wake up, take care of your mind, take care of your body, put some good information into your brain. Jump on that phone and nurture those relationships and reach out to new people that you haven't spoken to. You got to time that. We talk about time being your most valuable asset. Okay, so I'm going to do that from 9 to 11, right? From 11 to, one, from 11 to noon, I'm going to work on marketing materials. From noon to 1, I'm going to work on... Uh, I'm going to take lunch. I'm going to take a break. I'm going to recharge. From one to three, I'm going to get out to the community, hand out some of my flyers, go meet with some new builders, establish some relationships with some home agent, uh, some home sales individuals. You know, uh, take a take a commercial agent to lunch. 
what can I do to make myself relevant every day? That's what the Loaded Agent brand does. And, and that's what you need to do in order to, you know, have that success in that realm. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. So when it comes to new real, uh, realtors, yeah. what advice would you give to them? Get a routine, man. If you're a brand new realtor and you're watching this, you need to have a routine. And, uh, you know, it's a lot like, look, man, I, I lift weights. You know, I, I've done a bodybuilding competition. I, mm -hmm. I was over 300 pounds and I walk around at about 180, 190. And on the off season, I walk around about 210. If you're a realtor and you're watching this, you need to have a routine. The, the numbers game is a, name, is, a, is a game that you can never manipulate. The more of something that you do, you will get a result from it. If you don't do that thing as much, the result might not be as plentiful. Remember this, new realtors. Success is something that you're chasing, right? But when you catch it, it's not like you just catch it and put it down. If you put it down, it runs away. You got to keep it once you have it. And so build that, build that consistent routine. Switch it up when it's necessary. But remember, when you plant the seed, you don't get the fruit the next day. You plant the seed, you water it, you make sure that the environment's good, you turn over the soil, you do it again. You do it again. You do it again. You do it again. You eat so much shit until it starts to taste like chocolate ice cream. And if you're not willing to do that, you shouldn't do real estate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. Yeah, and I'm yeah. talking about six and seven figures consistently. And I take realtors that come in very timid Work on your confidence. Like I said, put that good information into your mind oh. and become what you want to become before you're actually it. Like I said, oh. Oh. this shit got to taste like chocolate ice cream eventually. <laughs> yeah. 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 What is the biggest sale you ever made? Uh, I, so <laughs> funny story. The first deal I ever did as a licensed realtor, I made about a $52,000 commission. Now this was on a $160,000 house. Huh. My my broker hated it she was like you're fired i was like why, why am i fired um that really happened it was just because i make what luxury realtors make for solving big problems from properties that you know might not be that much money so the biggest sale i ever made uh i did about 120 i did 100 i did a hundred thousand dollar commission then i did 115 or 124 thousand dollar commission oh. i did this all in the same year but this 115 or 120 thousand dollar one Uh, on like a six hundred thousand dollar house, I sold you know houses you know three quarters of a million dollars, close to a million dollars, yada yada yada. But I, it's the funniest thing is I make more money on the on the smaller projects because we're really helping people out of a bad situation. We help we do equity splits with our our clients, and you got to go to theloadedagent.com so that you can actually know why, how we do this. But the thing that's crazy is that second split that I did was with a set of realtors, Jerry and Emily Webster, Emily and Jem, Jem, I call them Gemily, Jerry and Emily Webster, out of state owner, about a million and a half dollar house worth in the Heights, burned down, abandoned. Uh, they had squatters in them, had to get the squatters out um, and never even met the lady put it up for $550,000, created the whole strategy for him, had it done in 14 days, had it funded in about 40 days, over a hundred grand. These kids, these, I call them kids because I'm 40 years old. They're, they're 22 and 23, <laughs> making a hundred thousand on one deal. So that's, you know, that's, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 That was the, those are a couple of the biggest deals. Yeah. The biggest deals. Yeah. Um, Jesus, that's about to stop the clock. Just stop it. Yeah. But uh, the last question. But you guys stole six minutes from me. No, yeah. <laughs> the last question for you is, is there anything else that you wanted to share about your success or your journey or anything else that you want people to know? You know, I really, I wrote this this morning. I said, I really feel like I was put on this earth um, to show people that it's your struggles that make your successes. Mm -hmm. It, You know, don't, don't try to skip the struggle, man. Mm -hmm. um, you know, uh, If, if you feel like in your heart, you know, you want to be healthier, start doing the things that will make you healthier. If you feel like in your heart, you know, you, you really want to be a better parent, a better spouse, a better brother, a, a better son, start doing those things. Uh, take action. Don't worry about what other people think about you. By the way, I know everything that I'm saying is way easier said than done. Okay. Um, but the thing that matters the most is that you, you love yourself. You know, every day, never let anybody take the value that you have from yourself away from yourself. Love yourself like everybody loves you. And when people hate you, love them even more because they need it even more. Um, try not to take things too personally to, to heart. And uh, 
anybody can reach out to me, dude. That's what I want people to know. Those are those are the those are the things that I live my life by. Those are the standards that I set for myself. Yeah. And uh, I try to make myself as, as available as possible. Some people are like, oh man, I reached out, but somebody on your team answered the phone. I'm like, bro, you expected me to answer it? <laughs> if I was answering it all the time, I would never be doing anything else. But yeah. Um, yeah, I try to make myself as accessible as possible. Uh, and uh, you know, you never know who you're talking to. So treat everybody with with mad respect, and that's that's what I try to do. You know, and I try to always, um, I love giving, bro. I think that giving is the catalyst for receiving, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the more that you give when you can and collaborate and uh, network with people. And if you, you know, you can't just put soap in this hand and then this hand gets clean. Mm -hmm. They have to come together. Mm -hmm. That's good, <laughs> so, so, you know, collaborate, network, and get with the right people. And then rid yourself of the people that you shouldn't. Constantly mm -hmm. weed your garden. Constantly mm. weed your garden. Don't let mm. the people that shouldn't be there be there to kill your roses. Mm. Yeah, man, you couldn't say any better, man. Yeah. I appreciate you, yeah. dude. Thanks no, for no. I appreciate you guys, man, and uh, I'm I'm looking forward to uh, doing a lot more with you guys in the near mm. future. And yeah, we're gonna do some amazing things. I want everybody to look out for theloadedagent.com, theloadedagentteam.com. If you're interested in getting into real estate, make sure that you go to theloadedagent.com. Join the free loading community. Um, I have a bunch of different links there, uh, but the main thing I want people to do is get into the free community. Get into the free community. Uh, let us show it, you, you what it is that we do. I do a lot of one-on-one -on -one mentorship and stuff like that, but yesterday's price is not today's price, so you better get in there as fast as you can. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Anything else you want to no, say? No, that's it. Awesome. Well, right. thank you again, man. No, thank you, guys. That was a great podcast. Thank a lot of knowledge and value for the people. That yeah. you.